Welcome to Dominion Church International. It is a beautiful Sunday and my name is Kaben. Here to take you through what's happening this Sunday at church. Okay, we are a church that is dedicated to witnessing, worship, and the word. But before I go forward, allow me ask you to invite every single one of your friends. Simply click on that link below. Yeah, that link. Then share it in all your social media platforms and welcome them. Tell them church is here. Church has gotten started. And let's praise and celebrate together. Amen. Love you so much for that. And God bless you. Now, every week at Dominion Church International, we keep church rolling through the week, even though we might not be open, uh, like you know what's happening in Uganda. But every Tuesday, we have a beautiful Bible study with our resident pastor, that is Pastor John Bazira. Every Tuesday, Pastor John Bazira is taking us through the book of Revelation. Amazing insights are being shared, and I believe you don't want to miss out on that. Now, come every Friday from 1 to 2 p.m., Yep, it's the Holy Ghost Lunch Hour Revival Service with Reverend Robert Kaziwe. Now, every Friday, please just join us. It is live. Join us and send in your prayer requests. Our pastors will pray with you. And I believe that our good Lord will answer that prayer and he will bring change in your life. Every Sunday from 10 to 11 a.m., just like it is right now. We are right here bringing you church right at your place of convenience. It is a party with the word, with worship and with amazing testimonies. Now, without further ado, allow me to welcome our amazing worship team, the Dominion Praise Ministries, as they take us on into the amazing throne room of praise and worship. And I believe that you are going to be blessed because you tuned in. Love you so much.
you know the Bible says, God says that I will, for the fact that you have set your love on me, therefore I will deliver you. In Luganda, Kubanga and Tadeko Kagala Kuchendi Vamonia. Akasera Kanochetuino Kola Kumusa Kokagala Kafe. Amen. He is going to go before you and break down all those gates of bronze. Amen. So come on, love on him this very moment. Worship him because he deserves all the glory. He deserves all the power. Father, you are so worthy to be praised. We exalt you, my King. We lift you on high. Your voice is mightier than the waves of the sea. Father, you alone deserve the worship. You alone deserve all the praise. Somebody exalt Jehovah. Somebody worship the morning star. Somebody exalt the land of the tribe of Judah. Father, we worship you. We are the ones that you sent your son to die for. Father, receive our worship. Teach us how to honor you, Lord. Teach us how to bow down before you, Lord. Father, we lay out our crowns today. We lay them down at your feet as we exalt you, Father. You deserve all the worship. You deserve all the praise. Come on, somebody. Raise your voice and exalt the King of Kings. He is worthy. He is worthy of all the praise. Let everything that has breath right now worship him. We worship you, Lord. He has the depths of the earth in his hand. Come on, raise your voice and exalt him. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. And then see, never did he move yet. Let me see, you just see, did he move me, Colonel J? Oh. And then see, never did he move yet, yet. Let me see, you just see. Somebody raise your voice. Somebody raise your voice and worship. Oyo Mukama. Oyo Mukama. Mukamba and Tiwa Shitiwa. Oli Wa Shitiwa Sebo. Oli Wa Muendo Daddy. Oyo Mukama.
He is holy to be praised. He is worthy to be exalted. To you alone, we present our worship. For you alone are worthy. You alone deserve all the glory. You alone are worthy of all the praise. Father, we exalt you. Father, we exalt you. Father, we lift your name on high. Father, we
Everything about God is very perfect. Holy means uprightness. Holy means transparent. Holiness means no darkness. And yet the Bible tells us at the same time. Be ye holy. As your Father in heaven, He is holy. And I believe God will not tell us to be holy if He had not made a way for us to be. Holy. And the way is Jesus. Amen. 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 The way opens for us to get into God's presence where He can help us if we are willing to live a holy life. And if there's anything in your life, that need to be repented of, go ahead and repent. Ask God for mercy. Ask for God for forgiveness. Ask for God to cleanse you from your head up the sole of your feet. And the Bible says if we confess our sins, He is righteous to forgive us and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory for what you're doing in our lives. For the cleansing of the blood. For the healing of our spirits. For the healing of our souls. But above all, we thank you that the way to holiness was open for us. And today we can stand here and tell the world. God gave us his righteousness but which opened a way for us to be holy to be holy to be holy, to be holy. so we bless him and we give him all the glory in the name of Jesus everybody shout amen everybody shout glory hallelujah to the Lamb hallelujah once again, we welcome you to this great, great networking of believers where we connect with one another, where we connect with God's Spirit, where we love Jesus and bless His holy name. Hallelujah. God bless you as you open your spirits, as you open your minds, as you open your Bible as well to receive from the Word of the Lord. And I believe your life will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have a Bible, I want you to go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 11. The gospel according to Saint Matthew. Chapter 11. The Bible tells us from verses 1. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples. He departed earth to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ is sent to of his disciples and he said unto him art thou he that should come or do we look for Another. 
Jesus had finished commanding his disciples. And we saw that last week. In the great commission. Where he commissioned them. To preach the gospel. To teach the gospel. To heal the sick. To raise the dead. And to cast out demons. And the Bible says he gave them power against all spirits of sicknesses and disease. And so they went preaching everywhere. And then Jesus embarked on preaching again. Now let's pick it again from the book of Luke. Chapter 7. From verses 18. The gospel of Luke chapter 7. From, from verses 18. And the disciples of John. Showed him all the things. Verses 19. And John calling unto him two of his disciples. Sent them to Jesus saying. At thou he that should come. Oh look we for another. I want you to mark John's question. Let's repeat the question again. And John calling him. Two of his disciples and sent them to Jesus, saying, Are thou that should come, are thou he that should come? Or look we for another? Verses 21. And in the same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits and unto many that were blind. He gave sight. Then Jesus answering and said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard and how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf ear, the dead are raised to the poor. The gospel is preached and blessed is is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Today I'm going to use for a subject sharing a few minutes such no father. John the Baptist such no father. Mr. Scientist such no father. The one that is mourning. Gwakaba. Having all kinds of questions. Such no father. You who don't know where to turn. Gwakaba. Life has no more meaning to you. I want you to know that mm -hmm. God is telling you. To, 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 to search no father. If you are at the crossroads of your faith and you don't know which way to go, you want Christ, you love Christ, but there are things that have happened to you. Maybe you have lost your peace. Maybe you have lost your job. Maybe you have lost a loved one. And probably your pastor is gone to be with the Lord. And so you have questions after questions. Is there a meaning in life? Is, is there a way out of this? When will God COVID end. COVID and if COVID ends, what is next? What's the purpose of life? How can I overcome this? How can I arise out of this? 
How can I recover? And the questions are many. And you know, in life, there are all kinds of questions. And I believe the reason why people ask themselves a lot of questions is because they don't have the answer. But I want you to know the same way Jesus answered John the Baptist when John was confused. He didn't know what to think about life. And yet remember the very reason why John was born. Let me say that again. The very reason why John the Baptist was born. Was to prepare a way for Jesus to come. And the Bible tells us. That the mother of John was barren. And she was old. And by a miracle and by God's mercy. John was born. And when John was born, in fact, before his birth, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And his purpose of being born filled with the Holy Ghost was to prepare the way of the Lord. And when he began to preach, the Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 1 that the Pharisees came and the children of Israel came and they begin to ask John questions from verse 17 of chapter 1 John who is you tell us are you the one that was promised are you the Messiah who is you John and John said I'm not Jesus I am not the Messiah but I am a voice that was sent by God to tell the world to prepare the way 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 and the Bible tells us that when John saw Jesus coming without anybody telling him that that was Jesus the Bible tells us John acknowledged Jesus from a distance and say this word in John chapter 1 the gospel verse 29 behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world and then Jesus came to John Matthew tell us that when he came to John, John asked Jesus to baptize him. And Jesus said, no, John, you must baptize me, for we must fulfill all righteousness. And the Bible tells us when Jesus was baptized and then he got out of the water, the heavens were open and the spirit of the Lord descended upon Jesus like and a voice said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and these are the testimonies of John after that experience John said I did know him but the one that sent me to baptize said to me upon whom thou shalt see the spirit of the Lord descending upon you and remaining home like a dove. That's the one that I've sent. That's the one I've chosen. And John said himself that I saw and I witnessed and I'm here to tell the world that this is the son of God. So he has passed. All of a sudden, John found himself in prison. And then life is upside down. And in prison from what we understand, he has begun to question his faith. He doesn't know if this is the true Messiah. Maybe he was asking himself if he is the anointed one. As I announced why I am in this condition. 
If it's the miracle worker, I would expect him to come and open the door of the prison so that I can get out miraculously. And so he's thinking and thinking and thinking. He doesn't know what to think. Sometimes he thinks about God is good. Sometimes God is not good. He's at the crossroads so faith. Because how can you ask such a question? Asking Jesus himself when you are the one who announced him and said, Jesus, are you the one that should come? If you, John, can ask such a question, then how about to me? If you who baptized Jesus and saw heaven open and saw people turning to God in great numbers and you tell the world that is the Messiah and two of his disciples followed Jesus because of your testimony. How can you question if that is Jesus? If that is Jesus? If that is Jesus? question to me is John what happened to you? A man who declared that that was Jesus. A man who boldly told his world repent. Repent. For the kingdom of God is come. And the Roman soldiers came and said, John, what do you want us to do? And John told the soldiers, don't charge more than you could charge the people. And the top tax collectors came. And they said, John, what do you want us to do? And then John told them that I want you to know don't overcharge people. I hearing. And the Pharisees came and John told them you generation of vipers repent and show fruits of your repentance. And when Jesus talks about John in the book of John chapter 5 he says he was a burning and a shining light. But how can John, who is a shining and a burning light, come to a place of doubting that this is Jesus or not? And the question is from one generation to another. We come to God and we say thank you Lord for saving our lives. One month we are on fire. Two months we are on fire. Three months later we are on fire. One month we are on fire. One year questions begin to ask. And you begin to ask yourself what is wrong with me? Can God really help 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 me? Can God bless me? Can there be a breakthrough for me? Does life have a meaning? Where can I go from here? How come if God is on the throne? How come I have lost everything that I have worked for in life? And I believe there is no better time than this for people to ask themselves such questions. Because what is happening to our world is happening to everyone in the world. Whether you live in America, or you live in Africa or you live in Asia or you live in Australia whichever part of the world you live in whichever status you have in life rich poor educated non-educated wise foolish it makes no difference what has come upon us in this world makes us to sit down and begin to ask ourselves questions but I want you to know search no father seek no father ask no more questions because the answer to everything
every question you have is in that man called Jesus of Nazareth. Mr. Reagan, Mr. Politician, Mr. Physics, Sister Scientist, Mr. Preacher, Mr. Apostle, Sister Prophet, Mighty Worshipper, whoever you are, found by Christ, lost without Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with demons, it makes no difference. If you have questions, God is telling you all the questions you are asking, the answers are in Jesus. And if you have Jesus, you have all the answer. All you've got to do is to simply have a faith as a little as a mustard seed. He will come and save you. He will come and help you. He will come and lift you. If you have questions about sickness, Jesus answered that question. Is said to the disciples of John, I want you to watch me. And then he called the sick. He called the blind. He says, be open. And the eyes were open. And then I can see him turning to the disciple of John. Do you have any question if I can heal? And they said no. He said, what other question? About the dead? Call, call, bring me some dead people. And they brought and erase them from the dead. So, do you have any questions? And they said no. Because right there in their eyes, the Bible saw us in the book of Luke that the dead were raised. And then he turned around and, and said, said, let me see some poor people here. And the poor people came and he preached to them and he prayed for them and miracles of prosperity began to happen and the poor were made rich. And then he turned to the disciples of John. Any more question about poverty? And any question, if, if, and the answer, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Says, go tell John. I don't know what it is. Hear me, politician. Jesus is telling us to tell you that is the answer for every political problems we have. Because the problem of politics is the human heart. And the human heart has one problem. And that is the sin problem. And the cure for the sin problem is Jesus Christ. Yes, when John saw him, he said these words in John 129. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And in Matthew chapter 1, the Bible says, he shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. In the book of Hebrews, the Bible says, Jesus died for as for once to redeem us from our sins so that the way to God should be open so to the politician Jesus is the answer to the world that is sick the Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38 how God anointed Jesus Christ and Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and even all those that were oppressed by the demons by Satan. And if you have demons search no father. You don't want to go. You don't have to go to witches thinking that somehow your dark world will eventually be turned around by consulting demons by consulting Satan. No. We are have the scripture telling us in the book 
of Matthew chapter 8 verses 14 going that when he was at Peter's house in the evening time they brought the people that were sick and the Bible says he casted out every demon by his word he casted out the demons by his word and he cured every disease so that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet that Jesus took our infirmities and bore all our sickness what is my question what is your question is it a question about wisdom the Bible tells us in the book of First Corinthians chapter 1 that God has made Jesus to be wisdom unto us what is it that you are searching. Are you searching for peace? The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 from verse 6 that unto us a child is born and to us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful Mighty God Chancellor Prince of Peace of the increase of his government there shall be no end what are you searching for are you searching for peace he's the prince of peace are you searching for healing he is the mighty miracle worker are you searching for your way to God he said I am the way I am the truth and I am the life and no man can come to the father except by me now to a child of God as I conclude who has questions whether tomorrow will have meaning. He told the disciple of John as he concluded by answering their questions. He said these words. I'm going to read them to you. Chapter 7 verses 23. He said these words. And blessed is he Whosoever shall not be offended in me. He's saying if you allow the offense of mistakes if you allow your disappointments to take root in your heart you will not receive his blessing. If you allow the pain of the loved ones you have lost, and I believe in this period, to a certain extent we know people that have passed on. Some of them are lost eternally because they died without Christ. Some of them have died in Christ. And somehow we have the pain. And somehow we have told us Ourselves. I prayed for my brother. I prayed for my sister. I prayed for my, for my friend. How come? And then your faith is in balance. If you want to receive the blessing of God, throw away every offense and renew your faith again and renew your mind again so that the blessings can flow. There is no more hope without Christ. There is no more God without Christ. There is no more, no more fulfillment without Christ. There's no healing without Christ. There's no prayer which can be answered without Jesus. And sometimes we've got to be like David. After so much discouragement, you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. And I'm going to ask you to get up on your feet. And I want you to raise your hands to the Lord. I want you to raise your hands to the Lord. 
And I want to tell the Lord, renew my faith again. And that is to a Christian. The certain things I may not understand. But I live by and by. Answers will come. Because in faith we believe. God is smarter than all of us. And God knows what he's doing. So to a child of God, simply ask him to renew your faith. Jesus told Peter, he says, you know, Simon, Simon, in the book of Luke chapter 22, from verse 31, Satan has desired you to have you that he may sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And when that faith is strengthened, you will receive the healing. To a man and a woman out there, you have never come to Christ. All you know is religion. And there's a big difference between Christ Jesus and religion. And the difference is simply this. In religion, we seek for God. In faith and in Christ, God so loved the world that he gave that whosoever receive him will receive eternal life. And to you, to a sinner who is searching, I present to you Christ. Raise those hands and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Because he is the answer for my trouble. He is the healing for my sickness. He is the forgiver for all my sins. I receive his cleansing blood. I receive this eternal gift. And in the name of Jesus, I believe he died for me. I believe he rose from the dead from. and I receive his mercy now. and in Jesus' name. I am Christian now and I am born again in Jesus' name. And I'm going to pray the blessing of God upon you, my friend. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will release blessing, the blessing of healing, Jesus of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior. The same way you heal the sick when the disciples of John came to you. I pray that you will reach out and heal your people now. Heal them now. Heal them now. Set them free from their heads up the soles of your feet. In the name of Jesus, we love you so dearly. Keep believing. Keep trusting. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.